Lord Castellan Creed and Colour Sergeant Kell, his most trusted warrior and friend, are holding out in the last outpost on a mech world, which lies just on the outer reaches of Cadia. Sir, I've been sending out the stress signals on the Vox, but I've had no reply. I'm not sure if our message is getting through. Then we will continue to hold out at all costs to the last man to defend our honour of Cadia, Creed replies. The Vox falls silent. Welcome back to the channel and uh, if you haven't guessed already today we're going to be doing a bit of 40k not quite 40k as you would know it it wouldn't be proper 40k with him playing no not at all <laughs> <laughs> well what's it all about well over the weekend i was working nights and i come up with the idea that uh, with obviously the lockdown and people you know they're not being able to play with their mates and that at the clubs um, cooperative gaming, solo gaming, certainly taken off quite leaps and bounds if you look across the internet and Facebook, etc. And why not do some of ourselves with 40k? Um, it's, I've spoken about it many times in the past that I'm not a fan of the 40k the way it is at the moment. I think it's got over bloated again. But one thing I do like is the Apocalypse Rules because they were based on, or they're very loosely based on the old Epic. And I was a fan and loved Epic years ago. And so what I thought was, over the weekend, I thought, wouldn't it be a great idea if we did our own version of Rourke's Drift? Orcs Drift. Oh yeah, Orcs Drift. <laughs> so why not? And so what we thought we'd do is, I'd come home and mention it to Jamie after nights, and... Um, That's never a good time to mention never, stuff. No. <laughs> no, it never is. Um, so and what I said to him was, I said, well, why don't we get the Imperial Guard out? Oh yeah, by the way, I'm old fashioned. They're not Astro Militarum, they're Old Guard, they're Stormtroopers, they're Guardsmen, and that's where we leave it at that. And I've based them on 25 mil rank bases. Including your Orcs including on 25 your, mils. Yeah, I'm old fashioned, right? So, so what I do, I said, so I said to him, I said, well, why don't we come up with our own little game? And I come up with some ideas using the Apocalypse game. And together, yesterday, we thrashed out some ideas and uh, we had a quick dummy run through and we thought we quite enjoyed it and we thought that you guys might be interested to see what we had done isn't it mate yeah definitely so how we're going to do this then normally we would do an end of turn after reaction report but as you guys don't know what we've done and how we've done it we're going to break down say the first turn and uh, go through each section so it gives you an idea of how it plays if you're familiar with apocalypse rules or certainly the latest version of the apocalypse rules then some things will be quite familiar. You'll just see a couple of caveats where we've made some changes. So we basically use the main mechanics. It's yeah. just altering it to for activations and everything else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so so there we have it. And um, so what I'll do is I'll get the camera down and I'll, we'll start going through each of the turns and that with you. And then sort of by the end of the uh, the, uh, the sort of the, the game, that what we'll do is we'll do after action reports per turn. But so certainly get you into it, show you what's happening, how the orcs are deploying and the guards are going to defend him if they can. So there we have it. So we'll turn the camera around and we'll get on to it. All right. So here's the table all set up, ready to go. Obviously in the centre there is the Orcs Drift itself. And what we have in there is a uh, Chimera which is immobilised. Um, to the right of them we have some Stormtroopers or Gar Screen Troops, however you want to pronounce them. Um, the Orcs is Kellen Creed. We've got a Vox in the back and a Medicus and good old Cal with his, uh, with his uh, standard bearer there. Uh, that forms one zone. Um, zone to the left here as we look at it, we've got a Guardsman squad with a heavy bolter, uh, another Guardsman squad at the back there with a rocket launcher or missile launcher and we've got a, a Psyker there. To the right hand side we have another Guardsman squad with a rocket launcher Another Guardsman squad at the back there with the Heavy Bolter and there's a normal commander. How the Apocalypse normally works, you have a leader and then uh, so many units to form a formation. And then so many formations make up your army. In our game what we've done is, is basically the whole of that defensive area is under Creed's command. Um, although we've got three separate sections there, the objective for the Orcs is to capture all three sectors. Um, and for the Guardsmen is to obviously hold on to at least one of those sectors by the end of the game. The game will last five turns um, and on the fifth turn we will roll to see if the game ends. If we don't, if we roll a six, 
the game ends. If it's anything other than the six, the game continues for a six turn. Um, at the end of the six turn, the game will automatically end. We have four spawn points. One here, one over there, on each corner, one on there, and one down here. Now at the start of the game, uh, we will place four counters in the bag, and obviously number one to four, just getting that for Jamie a minute. And Jamie's put them in the bag, and we're gonna randomly draw them out. See which warlord is in there. Yeah, see. So the first one. Let me place it down there then, mate. Let's have a look, what we got. Number four. Number four, so get number four leader. And we're gonna place him on number four spawn area. And we draw another one out, so that's our main leader there. Next one then, mate. And we draw number, number one, which is in that corner there. And we have, I'm using Snick Rot as another leader. And the next counter out, please, mate. Yeah, move that out of the way. Number three. Number three. And we've got, that's in this corner. That's just in there. Okay, and the last but not least, we've just approved what it number it is. Should be number two that's left. And there's number two for number two. And that's a weird boy. Oh, sorry, it's the Big Mac. Do apologise. Yeah, <laughs> we were going to put the weird boy in, but we didn't. So that's it. So that's the deployment zones for the leaders. And basically what's going to happen now is we will put all the counters, there'll be 16 counters in the bag for the troops. And what I'll do is I'll go through the troops uh, to show you what we've got. So here we have some of the forces that we're going to be deploying for the game. In this tray here, we have six 10 Orc Boys units. Um, and this tray over here, we have a further three Orc Boys units, uh, two Knob units there and there, a Storm Boys unit of five, a Looters unit of five, and three Killer Cans. Now, each turn one to four, we've set aside a number of units that will be automatically deployed via some counters. And in the start of the first turn, we have six shooters and two uh, slugger boys. Um, and then turn two, we'll go through that as we go. So I'll get back to the table and then we'll start deploying some troops. So Jamie, the first counter out of the bag is gonna be for the first unit of the first turn. So this will be for the first lot of shooter boys. Number three. Number three. So the second shooter unit counter then Jamie drawn from the bag is play going at number one. So they'll be deployed at number position one. So the next shooter unit then, Jamie, is going to be going at number three. Oh, it's another one at number three. So you've got two lots there. So the fourth shooter unit then, Jamie, is going to be deployed at number three again. That boy, he's got three units on his uh, So the position. fifth shooter boys unit then, Jamie, is going to be deployed at position four. Oh, that's handy then. That's the one over in the far corner over there. So the sixth and last shooter unit is going to be deployed this turn then, Jamie, is going on position four again. So the first of the two slugger and chopper units then, Jamie, going on position two. Oh, that's good, because he's got nothing on there at the moment. <laughs> right, and the last unit uh, should be a slugger boys unit. Jamie, where is that going to be going? Position one. That's okay, that's the one over there. So first, uh, lots of units are deployed, ready for the first turn. So in position two here, which is because it's right in front of me, we have the mech, and then we have one unit of 10 boys. You'll notice that the boys than that, or the orcs and that, we've used in the movement trays for the apocalypse, whereas the guardsmen we haven't. Uh, that's just for ease for us for moving the troops about. Um, so position three over here, obviously we've got the leader there. We have three units of 10 boys, which all got deployed onto that space there. Over the far side, which is position four, uh, we have two units, one there and one there, along with the war boss. And on position one, again, there's two units, one there, one there, with Snick Rock in there. So there we have it. So terrain-wise and figure-wise, as probably all of you know if you're a GW fan uh, or know about GW models, all the figures are Games Workshops um, and the terrain apart from a couple of odd barricades, which I picked up from resin ones years ago. The terrain boards we're using here are from Speed Freaks, this uh, box set that they did last year. Um, it's about one and a half sets, I think, we're using here at the moment. Is that right, Jamie? Yeah. 
yeah, that's what I thought it was. And as I say, all the terrain, most of the terrain in that in there is all GWs. Right, so that's all the deployment done. We're now to get ready to start the uh, activations. Right, so each faction has six sort of asset cards um, to be drawn uh, one per turn. Uh, the orcs have to use theirs per turn, whereas the guardsmen can hold on to theirs and form a hand of cards and use them as and when the card act action sort of states they can use it. So for the first turn then, Jamie, if you want to draw the orc card and sort of read out and see what they've got. So the first card is, here we go. Um, so we will select a detachment. So for our purposes, we will select a zone or one of the four zones by rolling a dice, we'll roll a d12, and our 1 to 3 will be 1, 4 to 6 will be zone 2, and so on and so forth. Next, we um, this will mean that we have to we we'll have to change one of the orders to an assault order. So our activations for the orcs is done on an AI system. So we'll roll a dice to determine what order they would get. This would then mean if any of them, if all of them have assault, there will be no effect. If one of them does not have the assault order, then it, we will roll to see which attachment has their order changed to assault. All right, mate. Yeah, that's fair enough. So that's handy to note. So we'll have roll for those off. So the uh, guardsmen then, what's their uh, order for the, the first one they've drawn? So their order is overlapping fields of fire. This means that um, we can select a detachment. So as we've said before, for the purpose of this, the whole thing is the detachment. And this will allow us to re-roll all hits against a single target unit. We must select that unit at the start when we play the card. Obviously, as we've just said, you're, the guardsmen are allowed to keep their card and can retain it if they want to use it at a later date rather than using it straight away, unlike the orcs. Yeah, so that's sort of a bit more sort of flexibility in their command and structure and that, that they have in it. That's what we decided there, didn't we? Okay, so that's that then, mate. So then we'll get ready to roll up some activations for the orcs then. So the first thing we're going to do is roll for the initiative. So the first dice then, Jamie, is a d6 for the orcs. And they've rolled a five we and didn't want that. no, we didn't want that. <laughs> and for the guardsmen, then make one a six. No, come on, mate. And rolled a two. So the orcs will have the activation of the first turn. So basically, what that means is we'll be rolling for their orders, and and then they will be able to activate a formation, which will be a group on one of the corners that uh, we will roll for. So first, uh, do let's roll for. Number one over here, Jamie, what orders are they going to have the first one then? So, so before I roll, the table we have it is that if it, they roll a one, they have an aimed fire. On a two to four, they will advance. And on a five or six, they will charge. This represents the orcs wanting to charge in and take the drift. Yeah, wow, plenty of war, mate. Right, roll a d6. <laughs> Oops. And instead, he's rolled a one. They rolled a one. So, Gork and Mork has not so that is one of these counters here. As you can see, is the little aim token on it. So we place that with that. So that formation, all they're going to do this activation is shoot. But, like the Here We Go card that we've just drawn, that may get changed to an assault order. That's handy to know, yeah. That's true, mate. Right, so number two, the ones just down here. And what are they going to get there, mate? A three. Three. So that'll be an advanced. So that's an advanced one. So that is one of these green ones here. You see there? And we'll place that down on there to remind us that that's what they're doing. Okay, so number three over here. This formation here, and they've rolled a two. A two, that so they're advancing. So again, we pick up another one of the green tokens and just put it there to remind ourselves that they're advancing. And finally, position four over there, Jamie. What have they rolled? They rolled a four. They rolled a four. Advance. They're advancing. So good old orc traditional fashion. They like getting stuck in going forward. So that's all the orcs' active orders. However, the here we go card means that we must change one of their orders to a charge. And since none of them got charged, we'll have to do the one to three, four to six, seven to nine, and 10 to 12, to see yeah. which one it will be. So assuming one to three is number one, and we'll work our way around. Around the there. table, yep, yeah, that's so fair enough. A D12. And we've rolled a, a one. one. So that aimed fire one is now charging. Spot as on, that's what we wanted. <laughs> right, here we go. So that gets one of these tokens, which reminds us it's a charge token. So again, we'll change that one there from the shooting one to that one and place that one back on, the, on that pile there. So that's it then, mate. So there, we all know what we're doing here. Now we've got to decide what the guardsmen are going to do. Okay, so as this is a sort of a, either a solo or a cooperative game and it's down to us as the players, we want to defend the drift. 
Um, we know what activations the Orcs are doing this turn as they've had, they've had their uh, activations rolled for them. We think, well, we've got one unit which is over here, its formation over here is going to be charging. And we know they're going to be moving quite quickly. Everybody else is going to be advancing. So I think, personally, this area down here, Jane, what do you think? Shooting orders? Shooting orders. Okay. And before we continue, just want to say, although this is one detachment, and in normal um, apocalypse, you would always issue an order to a detachment, we're doing it by the unit for the guardsmen to represent that more character. Each squad has its own... Traits, yeah, getting rid of that flexibility in their command and control, wouldn't it, as well? So, that one here, yeah, so they're going to have a aimed fire. They're going to have an aimed fire. Oh, let me say here, the uh, container here has got two storm bolters on it. They're controlled via the centre section here. Uh, basically, the command post there is remotely controlling the uh, storm bolters there. The coin mirror in the front here. Although it can't move, its two main weapons, obviously the multi-laser and the heavy bolter, is still operational. The heavy bolter can fire in this sort of area, the multi-laser obviously with this turret 360. Okay, he's going to aim fire. Stormtroopers aim fire. Aim fire on that one there, and the last one then mate, what are you doing? Aim fire. So we're all going to aim and fire this turn then, so... <laughs> I reckon those, guys, those orc, cheeky orcs over there are going to be in, but there we are. So that's what we're doing here. So let's roll up to see which four orc formation is going to activate first. And how the activation works is one formation activates, and th so it'll be the orcs first, um, and then we will activate one of our groups uh, second, and then vice versa. It sort of tags along one and then the other. Okay, now, mate, roll your dice. On 12. So... Position four is going to activate first. So York movement is five inches on, an act, on a normal advance order. Also the advance order allows them, they can if they want to, shoot at the end of the activation. Um, if you have an aimed fire, that's all you can do in the turn. And uh, the charge order is basically double the movement, so 10 inches for the normal York boys. Um, and, and if they make contact, they will be able to fight at the end of it. Okay, these move forward there. So, are they got any shooting they want to do, Jamie? I think they do. Okay, they so they want to. They're probably not going to hit. <laughs> now the orcs are pretty rubbish. Right, so we've got so these boys over here. They've got one rocket launcher in there, and obviously is a group of ten boys. This group here has one big shooter, and a group. group and the rest of them have got shooters. So, so going to be shooting at that target unit with the heavy bolts. So there. both of those are targeting this squad here. And so what are we rolling first then, Jamie? We're going to do the shooters from the rocket unit. Shooters from the rocket unit. How many dice is that? Four dice. Four dice. We use our attacks value, which is one on here for ten boys. Attacks one, and then we check the shooters times four. Times four. Right, okay. And they need, what, fives to hit? Fives. Fives to hit. Usual yeah. sort of walks to hit. And yeah, usual walk shooting. Rubbish. A lot of noise, but not a lot of not of hits. So now the rocket launcher from him. Yeah, exactly. So again, five plus. No. And that's missed, and the big shooter. Well, we've got the big shooter now. Yes. Big shooter's hit with a five. And what's its damage then, mate? The damage on it, so it's against infantry, so we use the sap value, which is seven plus. Okay. And we roll d12 for this one. A four. They a four, missed. they've missed. And now we've got the shooters from the big shooter unit. Yep. One hit. One hit. So we check our shooters. On here, a sap, seven. Seven plus. again. All right. Yes. 11. So they've hit. So what that means is they've scored a single hit, which then needs a small counter, which is placed. Oops, not wrong one, one was me. It's placed on the guardsman unit do you want there. The guardsman to win? Yeah, well, of course I do. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end of the turn, we roll for the damage on the unit. So if the that guardsman unit receives another hit, we will put on a larger blast. And that makes it harder to save, which we'll go through at the uh, as as and when we come to those 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 points. So that's the activation for that orc formation. So we just had a little bit of a debate off camera to see which guardsman unit we were going to activate first, or which which group we were going to activate first. Uh, and we both sort of now agreed that the the centre group here, along with the containers, are going to activate. Um, so they've got an aimed fire token on their on their uh, units along with that and that 
Um, obviously, these two storm bolters in there will always have an aim fire because, as I said, that's controlled from the command post in there. So, which you don't want to do first, then, mate? I think we start heavy and we do the Chimera. Chimera first, then. What's he firing at? What, what so weapon? He's going to fire his heavy bolts first. Yeah, I'll take it at this, this unit here. Okay, and you've rolled. It's a four plus. Four plus. And you've got a six. Six, okay. So then we check the SAP because it's personnel. Yeah. It's a seven plus. A seven. Seven. So they've done a hit on there. So we just put that back on here. And then the multi laser. Again, we're looking for four plus. Unfortunately, we... that would be a miss. However, because it's named fire, you add the plus one to your That's hit. That's right, yeah. So therefore, that is now a hit. Yeah. Next, we use this one again. And then multi laser, SAP is a six. Oh, come on. That's a two. And that's a two. Use your guardsman firing again. Right, so another quick note as well is the ordinary guardsman troops on here we've classified as veterans. To represent their sort of heroic defences. Yeah, that's right, yeah. So again, they'll be hitting on, was it three pluses? Three plus. Three so plus for shooting. Fires, that'll become twos. Yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty good. Right, so that's those ones done then, mate. So the stormtroopers here then, where are they going? So they're going to go at the same unit, I think. They're firing down they're here down. as well. Yeah, okay. So because it's a 10 man unit on the stormtroopers, they get two attacks. Shoot. Okay, so two dice. And they require what to hit? Threes, so it will be twos with the aim fire. Yeah. Both hit. Two hit. And two D12s for damage on the same unit. And that's six with them because they've got the hot oh, shot. Oh, the hot shot last guns, yeah. A one. A one. Right, so there we go. So they've done another hit on this unit here. So that small blast marker comes off and we replace it with one of these bigger ones and that means it makes it hard for them to save. I don't think they can save they the orcs. Can't save. No, they can, orcs can't save. Well, we'll go through that. Save. <laughs> yeah, a wet t-shirt save. We'll go through the saves at the end of the turn. Right, so that's the end of the activation for those. So the storm bolters were over here. Uh, right, I reckon this one here, Jamie, onto that unit there. Just want to check, is it within 12? It should be. Yeah, let's check the range. No, it's just... Oh, yeah, he is just. So that front man. Yeah. Air on the side of awesome. So that's what we're going to do. Plenty of shooting. Rapid fire. Rapid fire. Now, this, we're going to treat the containers always being a 4 plus to hit as it's done fire a box command rather than yeah. agile men shooting. Double one. Double one. Rubbish. Right, and okay, so this one here on this end here. And they're going to shoot this unit on here. Would you roll? Oh, five, four, both hit. That's bottom. Damage. Is a nine plus, unfortunately. It's not very good. It's not very good. It's rubbish. That's <laughs> just rubbish. Right, okay, so Storm Bolters, a lot of noise, a lot of shots, but no hits. Right, so that's the end of the activation for the centre part of the defence. Creed can activate if he wanted to and go and do something. But for in, in these rules, they have no shooting weapons. They've only got close combat. Same with Kale and all the other leaders. And as well as the Orc bosses as well. Yeah, the, all leaders in this game seems to have just, just uh, combat weapons. So that's the end of that. And now we've got the next activations for the Orcs. Right, so next activation for the Orcs formation. Jamie, what we what we right rolled now then? A 12. 12. It's the big mob. So there's the big mob over there then. So... Right, so what are they doing there? They're advancing then. So we've got each unit doing their five inch advance. So what we'll do is we'll come back to that shortly. So there we are then, they've all moved up and then we do the shooting. Which one do you want to do then, Jamie? The far one over that side first? And where are they going to target? I suppose they're going to be see that one's over there then, yeah? Okay, then roll their so shooters, four dice. Ooh, three hits. Three hits with three sixes, one of them. Damage with the D12s. Three. Oh my god. Yeah, that's three three damage. That's one large and a small. So I'll just quickly come and get and there. Since they've already got small, they'll upgrade it to another large. Two large damages, that's right, yeah. So there's the small down there being replaced by one of those. Okay. Now I'd just like to say we're not playing the orc rule with Daka Daka Daka. Right, yeah, no worries. Yeah. <laughs> because otherwise that would yeah. Be, yeah, yeah. This is just a bit a bit of fun, a bit, bit of fun, isn't it? So this unit here then, Jamie? We've got to do the rocket. Oh yeah, the rocket, yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. No. no, he's messed, he's rubbish. Right, yeah, so this unit here then, onto them there. 
four dice. Another three hits. Three hits. I think they're going to get in. I think they're going to get in. One. Uh, one damage. That's a small little blast and on those. Rocket as well. Yeah. No. No, those missed. And the final unit then on the same. Those ones there onto there. One hit. One hit. No. No damage. Big, big shooter. No. no. Okay. So that's it for those ones that there. Was pretty successful. Yeah, I think it was, mate. Yeah. Right. So. Let's uh, decide which we're going to do for the guardsman off camera. Right, so we both agreed that this end section here is going to be activating, so that's the two units there. So which one do you want to do first then, Jamie? This one over the back here? Yeah, yeah okay. So they're going to be targeting which unit of orcs? Uh, I think we'll do this one to get the rapid fire on them. Oh, yeah, 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 because yeah, obviously we're in 12. So those onto there, and roll your dice then, mate. Two hits. Two hits. Fire. Aim for it, yeah. And they're veterans. Two damage. No. One five and a one. That's rubbish, mate. Right, and the heavy bolter? Yes. 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 And he's damaged. That's lovely. Right, so they've got a small blast. You can actually put that small blast on them now. Yeah. <laughs> I'll put that on there. And this unit here. I think it's got me the one staring straight in the face. Oh, straight down onto these boys here. It did them the damage. Yep. Yeah. Okay. One. One hit. Nine. And a nine. So, yeah. so that's damage and the rocket launcher or missile launcher. Yes. And that's hit. And seven and a twelve. And a so twelve. That a large blast. So that's a large blast on those. Just put them down onto there so we can see that. So that's a large blast on those. That's yeah. both that uh, end section operated, activated. So the next orc activation then is going to be odds or evens. So roll your dice then, Jamie. Evens. Evens. So, so it's this group on the corner of section two here, and they're going to just make their advance move. So five inches into there. Okay, and they've already got a blast marker on them. Maybe just going up with them. And who are they going to shoot at then? Uh, I think they'll shoot the stormtroopers there. I thought the stormtroopers there. Okay. So they've got, a, they've got in there, they're just sluggers, and they've got a big, big shooter by the looks on the end there. So yeah. Check the range of the sluggers, they are actually out of range. They're out of range, so just a big shooter then. One shot. Missed. Missed, okay. That's it. And that's the end of that activation. So the only one we got left to do is the guardsman on the left hand side there. Here we are then, this end section of guardsmen are going to be activating, and this section here first, I think, will fire across onto that unit there. So they've got las guns and a missile launcher. There's a las gun hit. Las guns hit. But not wounded. Not wounded. And the missile launcher is hit. And wounded. And damaged. So that's the small blast marker on those. I'll just go and pick one of those up. That's that there. And that belongs. I'll give you that then, Jamie. There you are, mate. Onto there. And this section here with the heavy bolter. Last They're gun. going to be targeting down here. Last gun. Hit. Yeah. Missed. Missed. Heavy bolter. Hit. Hit. Need this one to hit. No. Nothing. So, guardsmen, like the orcs, fired a lot of shots, didn't do a lot of damage. So then that leaves just one orc formation to activate. So there they are then. They've got their charge order. They move 10 inches. So Jim's just moving those up there. Straight forward, straight close to that guard's unit there. And the next lot over the back here, moving forward. Onto there. Onto there. <laughs> I tell you what, these guardsmen, they're going to be up against it soon. And that's that. So that's all they can do. They've got no other shooting. Because it's a charge order. Because it's a charge order. And they didn't make contact, so they don't do any fighting. So that ends all the activations for all the formations on the table. So all the four formations. And obviously the guards are just one large formation. We activated each section separately. So that's that done. So now we've got a roll for all the damage. Right then, so we've got a roll for the damage on the units. Which ones do you want to start with then, Jamie? Well, let's start with this Orc Boy unit. Okay, yeah. so he's got the large blast on him. So how does that all work? So, 
damage works where you will apply all your damage and at the end of the turn we'll go into the damage phase, which is where we're at now. If you have a small blast mark, you roll a defense dice for every mark you've got. If it's a small blast marker, you will roll d12. A large blast marker, d6. Obviously on the d12 you've got more of a chance of saving than on a d6. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So let's, if we take this orc boy unit, With the... their save is a 10 plus. However, they're on a large blast marker, so we can only roll a d6, which means yeah. that's a guaranteed hit. hit. So that's one of these counters over here. So, there we go. So normally you would have, uh, that represents a hit, doesn't it? Yes. But because these only take two wounds, they become crippled, which also affects... It'll halve their attacks. Their attacks, yeah, that's it. So we can take that blast marker off, yeah? Yes. So that one comes over here, out of the way. That's that one done. We didn't need to roll for that one, that was good. Nothing over... Oh, we've got one small one over one there, haven't we? There. So he rolls a d12 for that, is that right? Yep, and he's a 10 plus because it's a small blast. Four, got so, four. That's another hit on them. so that's a hit on them. So again, that's another one of these counters. But again, because they take only two wounds, that becomes a crippled unit. So we'll place that on there. Put that back there. And the next one then, mate? We've got another large blast walk boy unit. Last blast there. on that corner there. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so again, he's the same as the other one. He can't save that. So he automatically becomes crippled because he can only take two wounds. So that blast marker comes off of there. And goes back over there. Small one at the back there. Yeah, we've got this unit here with a small blast marker. So he rolls a d12. He did not make it because they have a 10. Ooh, so he takes a wound. So again, two two wounds, becomes crippled. Okay, and that's it for the Yorks, I think. Yeah, um, So the guards. So the guards corner on this one here, what's their save on those, Jamie? He's got a small blast. So their save on the veterans is normally a 10 plus. However, if you're in a defensible piece of terrain, which we are, is considered you will have an automatic 6 plus, which means obviously you can have a chance of saving on a D6 and a D12. Oh, that's great, isn't it? Yeah, obviously we are in a defensive position. That's what we wanted, isn't it? And more sort of holding out. So roll your D12 then, mate. So we'll do this for the small marker. We got a six. Six. So we can remove that marker and that has no effect on our game. Okay. And this guard unit's got two large blasts on it. So they rolled D6 and even sixes. This could be the end of this unit, you know. And it is. And it is. They think it's all over and it is now. So this unit, again, they only take two wounds and they got two large blasts, felt both their saves. They are removed from the game. So I'll just take a couple out to show you we're going to remove them from the game and I'll take them out between between saves. There you go, mate. That's lovely. Just put them up on the side there. That's great. So Now, obviously, normally at this point, you would do morale tests as well. However, we're not doing morale tests on the damage units just so we can keep it simple. Yeah, keep it simple, keep it flowing, get a fast-flowing game. All right, so that's the end of that turn. So that's the end of turn one. What we're going to do now is... We're going to roll for all the activations, we'll, and then we'll come back and we'll show you where units were deployed from, um, and then we'll show you their activations the orders that they could be placed on the units. Uh, so, next bit then. So, it's ne new, next turn two. Start of turn two. We've deployed the, the orc units. Uh, they had three units that came on the table. One was a knobs unit, was placed on here. Second one was a normal orc slugger boys unit over there, and thirdly was a looters unit over there. Uh, we rolled for their orders and this uh, group over here has got an advance. This one here, aim fire. This one here has got an advance and we've got an aim fire over here. So it's a pretty sort of evened uh, orders out, orders of, or evened itself out, sorry. Um, cards we've drawn, the Orcs have got... Pulsar rocket. So with this one, we're going to have to roll a D3 to see which zone gets rocketed. Okay, so I'm going to roll that then, Jamie. So we're on one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. Four, four so the centre one here. And then we roll a D12, and any unit will be on a five plus, so this will be a five plus, a five plus, and then six plus for the commanders. Yeah. So the first one here then, the stormtroopers, five plus. Yeah. Yeah, they, they take a, a blast marker. They get a blast marker, I'll do that in a second. Chimera. Chimera. Yeah. Oh my god, two twelves then, mate. Creed. No. No. Is his character. Yeah, and Kel. No. No. So two single blast markers on 
the Chimera and the Stormtroopers. I'll put that there and I'll just put him on top of there so we can see that. Okay, so that's that card played. Oh, what have we got? The Imperial Guard has a card for Born Soldiers, and it means we're allowed to um, shoot using D12s instead of D6s to hit. Oh, that'd be handy. Is that all our units, is it? Or is all our Guardsmen's units? Yeah, any Cadian. So we're going to roll for initiative then. So the Orc dice first. Oh no, mate, six, come on. <laughs> oh, a contrast in rolls there, six and a one. So the Orcs have it again. So which which faction's going to, or which group's going to, formation is going to move first? That lot. That lot there. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> so they're, they're advancing into there. So what we're going to do then, we're now going to revert back to how we normally do our games and that and do an after turn uh, report and that and, and uh, we'll get back to you at the end of the turn. So here we are, end of turn two. Uh, the Orcs advance from this corner here, made contact with the Guardsmen here. Um, the Guardsmen shot at them. Uh, they're, sorry, they received fire um, coming in. Guards melleed them and managed to destroy them at the end of the turn there. A few shots from these guys over here onto there. Uh, Storm Bolt was fired down onto this boys unit there and obviously they failed their saves. A uh, few shots went over there from the guardsmen. Again, nothing much doing there and vice versa. They didn't hit anything for the guard. Um, on this corner here, we had a boys unit with sluggers. Had a named uh, sh uh, order on them. Couldn't hit anything with their sluggers, but they received fire from the Chimera and the Stormtroopers there, they, and failed their saves. This corner over here advanced up into this section, melleed these two guard units, but the guard managed to <laughs> absolutely bossed it and saved, made their saves and that, apart from one guardsman, uh, a wound that's been taken on this unit there. So they're now crippled there. Um, Stormtroopers took a wound, but I think that was from the Pulse um, rocket at the start of the turn, and they failed that at the end of the turn there. So there we have it, that's the end of turn two and uh, we'll start deploying and do the orders for turn three. So we are then start of turn three, units deployed. This group, this corner here has got a killer can and another unit of boys. And over here, a knobs unit in this corner here. So three un new units deployed on the table. Everything is as was. All units uh, for the Orcs managed to roll a advance order. So you can see there, over the back there and in there. Um, we did draw a war card, uh, which allowed us to change one of the Orcs' uh, orders to an advance order. Well, as they all had advance, the card was irrelevant, so that's been burnt. However... For the Imperial Guard, they drew a Psychic Power, which was Psychic Barrier, which adds two to our saves, which can be very handy now. I think we need it now, now the Orcs are pushing in. So there we have it then, so we'll do, our, do the turn and then we'll get back to you. So here we are at the end of turn three. Uh, we've got the damage rolls to make, and we thought we'd show you this one this time. Uh, there's been a bit, quite a bit of action happening, so where do you want to start then, Jamie? Start with that boys unit. Oh, that start boys unit there. Oh, they've got two large blast markers on them, which means they can't save, they can't save. so they're instantly two destroyed. Wounds. Two wounds, instantly destroyed. So you want to get a tray over, please, Jamie? We'll pop them on the tray, out the way, and we'll remove those from the board. That one. And that one, and then we take away these two blast markers and just pop them over there. Uh, next one, then, mate. Uh, let's do this boy unit here. Yeah, we've got one on here. Don't forget as well. They take a wound. They take a wound. So again, that makes them grip because They've got two wounds, uh, and this one here. Another one. Another one there. Okay, that's lovely. So that gets rid of a few work boys there. Next one, we've got nothing over it's there. Just the, guardsmen, just the guardsmen. We've got one wound on this one here, so he gets a yeah, D12. Barrier, we're on a four plus instead of a six plus. Oh, that's right, it's our special card we played, isn't it? Yeah. Yep, he saved, saved it, so that's great. Take that one away from there a minute. There we are over there. And now this one. Oh, he's got a large blast, so we get the four plus anyway, don't we? Yes. Yeah, and no. Oh, no. That's it. That's the unit so destroyed. that's that guardsman unit destroyed here. So we'll just move his counters out of the way. And the orcs are certainly getting the most of that. So you take those out of the way then, Jamie. We can see where the gaps are appearing. Right, so where we are then. So the orcs 
certainly pushed out the guard there. They fell back from that position onto there. They're getting ready to advance across there and there to capture that sector. As you've just seen there, the guardsman units there has been, been wiped out by the melee of the chopper unit there. You can see now what's going to happen. They're going to chop into there. And we've got two boys units plus the leader. They're going to be fighting up against that guards unit there. So that's it. That's the end of turn three. And uh, join us back for start of turn four. Here we are then, top of four, start of turn four. And three more units are deployed. And this one we had killer can in here. And over here, another killer can and a unit of storm boys. Um, we didn't want to roll a charge order for this lot here because they can go 28 inches. Unfortunately, we did roll a charge order and they are going to probably go 28 inches. Um, so that's it. So drawn a card. So our cards that we've got is for the York's Lucky Blue Gits. And that allows us to re-roll ones basically to hit, to wound and save. And for the guard, what do we roll for that? Get, draw for that one, Jamie? Our stormtroopers, for every hit they do, it counts as two. So if we get into rapid fire range and have four dice with them, that means if we hit with all four, there'll be eight hits. I'm pretty good, isn't it? So we'll have to have, have some of that. So there we have it then. So initiative then this turn then, Jamie, to throw for the guard. Four and a two. Go for that. I think the first time the guards had the initiative. <laughs> right, so we'll do, the, we'll do the turn and we'll come back to you at the end of the there turn. There we are, the end of turn four, ready to do the damage step. Orcs are really breaking in now. So, here we are then, Jamie. Which do you want to start with the damage then? I start with the knobs. The knobs here, yeah, they took a bit of fire from those there. So, two, uh, three large blasts and a small, more than their wounds. No, let's just try and pick that one up. There we are. Come in. Popping onto the tray. And I'll just get rid of the markers here. Pop them over there. That's it, them, them, and them there. Next one, oh, I've got one here on the looters. And their save are. Ten. Okay. There are four, so. Just those ones gone. Let's put them back on the tray. Just like that, there we are. There we go. Right. Let's do this lot next, because again, they've got a large blast. Large they blast, and they've already got a wound. wound on them, so they're gone. Happy days. Well, not for the orcs anyway. Um, so, what's next? Oh, we've got, oh yeah, epic battle over here. The Psyker charged in against Snickrot there, caused a wound on him. Snickrot didn't like it. And caused a large blast and a small blast onto the Psyker. And with, well, along with his orc buddies. So, on Snick, what then, Stu is? He's eight. just passed. Oh, with an eight. That's good. And put that over there. And what we've we got next then? I'll just do the Primar uh, Psyker. He's oh, failed. He's failed. He Gallantly goes down. Be remembered in the annals of Cadia for all eternity. Right, uh, we've got one blast on that unit of the boys at the back there. They failed, they are also destroyed. They're destroyed because they've already got a critical on them already. So we'll take them off then, Jamie. Just pop them over to the side there. It'll be fine. That's it, they're gone. So it gives the viewers a chance to sort of see how the guard are holding on by the skin of their teeth. Uh, we've got a marker on this Cadian unit here, or this guard unit here. They failed, they, they gain failed. a wound. They gain a wound. Right, okay, so let's pop, oh, you got one there, okay. That's fine. So that's that, that's all the blasts, isn't oh. it? Oh yeah, the Chimera's got one, isn't he, yeah. And he has taken one. Right, he's taking one for the team. There we are. Got one there. That's lovely. Okay, so there we have it. That's the end of turn four. Orcs. Are getting in there. Can we hold on? Can we hold on to the at least one zone? You know, here we go. The Yorks are pretty much they've got one zone already. They're pretty much got this end zone here. It's whether or not we can get an activation over there to get them to get back behind the defence in the centre. Don't know. 
So that's it. Right, so we'll get back to you on top of turn five. There we are, start of turn five, potentially the last turn. Uh, no reinforcements for the Orcs now. They've had all the troops they're going to get for the game. Uh, so starting off their activations, they've got a charge order. This group here has got a stand and shoot. This one in this corner has got another charge order. And over the back there, they've got an advance. So the initiative for the turn, Jamie roll for the guard. The two, the one. one, so the guard have it, which is what we needed. So as you can see, <laughs> I think we're going to be probably doing those first there. Cards wise, we've drawn a bombardment card for the uh, guard. So once we've got that unit out of the way, I think we'll be calling it in after they moved. Yeah, so we can call it at any point during our activation, can't we? And the Orcs, they drew a... Opportunist, so they're going to, they would select a unit and we think they'd have to try and blow the tank and they can re-roll their, uh, they add ones to their hits and wounds against it. Yeah, that's cool. Right, so there we have it. So we'll play out the turn and we'll come back in the damage step at the end of the turn. So here we are, you reach the damage step of turn five, the potential last turn. The Orcs have certainly got this end of the table, or this end sector here. Guard pulled back in there and defending there. Coming around the back end here. They've gone over the top. The, uh, the commander's managed to charge into there. Didn't cause any wounds, but it's just doing his best to hold up that, uh, that section there. And over here, the mass brawl that's going on, these guard are defending like dogged devil dogs, you know, holding their ground, pushing back the uh, storm boys and the, and the boys units. And we've got the stormtroopers here engaging off against the uh, killer can there. Bit of few shots coming in from that uh, killer can and those knobs there. It's uh, no, not much damage done to the chimera or anything. So let's do the damage step then, Jamie. Where do you want to start, mate? Start with the killer can. Start with the killer can. Which one? This one here? Yeah. Okay. And roll your dice. That's a wound. That's a wound on he's him. He's only got one wound. He's only got one wound, so he's destroyed. Oh. The next one. Okay, this one here. He's got a large blast. Unfortunately, he's saved he's it. He's saved it, so that comes off. I'll take him off, please, mate. I've uh, got the guards unit in here. they got a large blast on them. They rolled a five. So they're gone. They're gone, unfortunately. We'll take them off in a second. And who else have we got? Oh, we've got a small blast on this one here. Saved. Saved it, so that'll come off. And the other guard, and the other guard unit here. Have failed. Failed. They'll get, they'll get a wound. Yeah, that's it. So we'll do that. I might as well just transfer that wound across there because they're gone. So that's that one there. That's all the wounds gone. So you want to take that unit out of there, please, Jamie? Yeah. Just pop them over to the side. That's it, so everyone, the viewers can see the carnage that's been going on by the Storm Boys and the, knob, and the boys' units over there. All right. So the drift is slowly fall into the orcs. So here we have the all important end of the turn, end of turn five roll to see if the game ends. Roll the dice, Jamie. No. No, one more turn. This will be the final turn, turn six. So there we go. We're set up, ready for turn six, and we'll get back to you with, with the commands and what's happening. So here we are on top of turn six. The guard have got put uh, assault orders on all their stuff apart from the Chimera because obviously that can because it's immobilized. Um, they've got to hold out this center. Uh, so <laughs> it's all down to this. Over here, we got an advance order on this group here. That group there has got a charge. They've got a charge and we've got advance on this one here. So the all important initiative roll in Jamie for the guard. Five and the Orcs. A four. That's what we needed. We needed to get the guard to have the uh, roll for this time, sling, sling the leaders in. It's time for a Creed and Cow to earn to get their pay. So uh, we'll join you back in the end of the turn where we uh, do the damage step. So you join us back at the end of turn six for the damage step. I've got to say, this has been a brilliant game, epic. So we've got to go to do the damage. Creed and Cow chopped down, went into the Orc Storm Boys and, and normal boys unit there and actually did it nothing. Uh, the company commander, likewise, did it nothing against the boys unit there, but took a wound. 
guardsmen over here valiantly trying to defend the barricades there didn't hit nothing but took a large blast so i think what we do is we'll start with those guardsmen there they rolled a three they're dead they're, they're gone we'll take them out in a second the company commander over here they've rolled a oh, 12. He's fine. he's fine yeah the leaders that's what we like to see the leaders doing their job right there we are and we got the knobs unit took a hit here they, uh, no. no, they saved it. Just. So they're okay. So if we take those out there, Jamie, and get rid of the counters here. That's that one and that one. And we can show the viewers how the game ended on turn six. There we are. That's lovely. Right, there we go then. End of turn six. The guard heroically holding on, creating Kel with the company commander, the stor stormtroopers, holding the center just. If it was another turn, they would have lost it. These boys would have been in there and those would have gone over the top. So by having the extra turn, give the orcs the impetus to go in, but manage to sort of hold off um, until, until, until the end of the turn there. So well under the guard and uh, join us uh, at the post-match roundup. So there we have it then, end of our Orcs Drift game. Um, what a game, really enjoyable, fun little game, uh, just using a set of simple mechanics to sort of just move troops around really. What do you think, mate? Well, as you say, it's very simple, You've not really changed a lot in the rules sense, yeah. so you can quite easily pick up on the rules as we were playing or see some, another guy from somebody else how to play apocalypse um you saw how we did the ai activation and with the data sheets being free online you could quite yeah. easily recreate this yourself yeah if you go onto the apocalypse um website in there yeah. from gw um all the data sheets which you see here um they're free to download you can download those you can sort of see what stats and that that we were using um, if you are interested in, in any of the amendments that we made to the game, let us know in the comments below. Um, and what I'll do is I'll do a blog post up about it and I'll post it to my blog and you can then download it from, from there. And I'll let you know in a future video what I've, when I've done it. Um, but yeah, great little game. And it just goes to show, you know, again, you can play this solo, cooperatively, especially obviously in the current times at the moment with the lockdowns that we all are sharing around the world. Um, and again, and it gets me to get my 40k miniatures out onto the table, which surprised him when I mentioned it. Definitely. <laughs> but yeah, it was fun. I mean, I, I love orcs. I love the orc models. Um, it's just, they're just silly like me. So, yeah. <laughs> so that's it. That's it for another video. And we hope you enjoy it. If you have, please give us a thumbs up. And... Uh, don't forget to, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe to us and make sure you hit the notifications. YouTube's algorithms and that mainly work through um, notifications and likes. Um, so just bear that in mind, that's the way it is. That gets us noticed, gets the channel noticed, and uh, hopefully we can help share our ideas with, with the faster, wider community. So without further ado, please stay safe, look after yourselves, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.